how do we cope with this is such an important issue. And to help shed more light on this, I'd like to bring in our friend, psychotherapist and New York Times best-selling author, Dr. Mike Dow. Welcome back to the show, Dr. Mike. Thanks for having me. Always a pleasure. So, Dr. Mike, I know that, that you're in a relationship with an ER physician who is also a, you know, on the front line. So yeah. you live it, you're dealing with this, this type of stress uh, day in and day out. How do we cope? Oh, it's been really challenging. You know, I've seen patients that I've not seen for 10 years calling me, they need to get in. And, you know, I think it's really important to talk about the fact that mental health looks so different in different people. So some people have that pandemic fatigue, they're feeling exhausted, other people are depressed, others are anxious. And we know from past pandemics that the mental health wave actually follows the pandemic wave. So I think we're gonna see a lot of mental health illnesses over the, the next year. And man, it's just exhausting at the end of the day. It's just exhausting. Um, uh, some recent research from the American Psychological Association found that 61% of Americans said they really could have used some more emotional support over the past year. So I think in terms of how do we cope, well, we've got to up our self-care game in any way that we can. I know that my partner and I, we have a treadmill now in the house. So, you know, we can run off some of that stress. If we can't go to the gym, if we can't go certain places here in Los Angeles, uh, we turn to each other. Um, but, you know, I'm not going to lie. It's been a really, really challenging year. Dr. Mike, I so appreciate you sharing that perspective. And you're right, we are in a mental health pandemic as well. We know from recent research that American adults reported considerable elevated adverse mental health conditions of all types, 31% with anxiety and depression concerns, 26% with PTSD, 13% have started or increased their alcohol or substance use, and even 11% have seriously considered suicide. And for you, Dr. Mike, aside from helping people with these mental health struggles, COVID has had a personal impact on you as well. You lost your grandfather a month ago to COVID and we're so sorry for your loss. Yeah, thank you. You know, um, it was very hard, you know, losing him a month ago. My grandfather was uh, one of the most important people in my life and he was so supportive. Um, and, you know, this show is actually a, a piece of one of his best memories. Uh, what was so interesting, uh, there he is. Um, I still can't believe he's gone. Um, my brother and I wrote a book, uh, Healing the Broken Brain, about stroke survival, uh, because my brother is a stroke survivor. And uh, you guys surprised me right there um, with my grandpa. And it was one of the best memories he ever had. Um, kind of a funny story. He lived in a senior community in Las Vegas, and he was telling everybody, I didn't know he was coming uh, to the show. And he told everybody, I'm going to LA and I'm going to be on a talk show. And they called my mom and they said, I think, I think your dad may be showing signs of dementia. He's saying he's going to a, a talk show. And she said, no, he is actually going to be on a show. And he said it was one of the best memories. And I will always, always remember my grandfather's being so very, so very proud of me, so supportive. And, you know, I, I think we look at those numbers, you know, over a half million Americans uh, have passed. But, you know, when it's you, when it's your mother, your grandfather, your son, your daughter, it's, yeah. So, you know, when I'm sitting in sessions and I'm working with somebody uh, who has lost somebody, I get it. You know, I, I get it. 